OK, so <clears throat> hello everyone. Welcome to today's event. I'm Ray, uh, the BDM from uh, our factory uh, department. Today we are honored to invite An Huang, uh, our business development manager from our factory Taiwan, and Sao Wei Dan, Wise IoT Solution Manager from Advantech APEC area, and Hanga Shaya Kusuma, uh, the general managing director of our partner from Apple Tech in Indonesia to discuss uh, uh, with us how enterprise should respond when facing the abnormal events. OK, so today we are going to discuss the topics you see on the screen, uh, starting with the presentation on the application of the abnormal event management by N. And following that, Sao Wei uh, will introduce how Advantech's wise IoT platform can help our users quickly move into the digital production stage. And lastly, Hanga uh, will share some of the practical experience, and then we will have our Q&A section in the last part. Okay, so Advantech is committed to providing a comprehensive digital transformation platform uh, dedicated to support our partners and users to manage the device and system integration smoothly and easily in no code, low code environment. Today, we will focus on the management uh, of on prem instance, discussing how manufacturers can more efficiently uh, solve the difficulty in their factories when they are facing such, a, such as the incidents. Okay, so nowadays, okay, yeah. okay so nowadays, uh, most of the factories in response to rapidly change and diverse market demands, change in order patterns, frequent equipment change over, and multi multitude of the uncontrollable equipment issue all contribute to the increasing difficulty in factory measurement. The problems uh, we need to confront at the same time are much more challenging than those in the past, which uh, were stable, less varied, and uh, involve bulk orders. Among this, uh, unplanned downtime is the main cause of, of loss. As mentioned in the presentation, unplanned downtime leads to the approximately uh, loss of 260,000 US dollars per hour, and most of the manufacturers face about 800 hours in unplanned downtime annually, with each incident lasting about 1.5 to 4 hours leading to an annual loss of 50 million, uh, so, sorry, 15 billion uh, US dollars. Moreover, over 80% of the manufacturers have experienced unplanned downtime in the past three years. Although the remaining 20% may have avoided such as abnormal events through the preventive maintenance or other methods, this avoidance has led to a higher capital expense or waste of the labor and uh, spare parts. The, pri uh, the primary reason of this uh, that over 70% of the on-site manager are unaware of the condition of their equipment, whether it's come to the maintenance, upgrade, or replacement, and cannot point, uh, pinpo pinpoint the exact timing for these actions. So in such a uh, situation where unplanned downtime is so unmanageable, uh, how should we deal with the endless strain of this uh, abnormal event in the in factories? At the moment of the facing them, how can we improve the efficiency of our handling? So next, uh, let's invite An Huang, BDN of the Advantech Taiwan, uh, to explain the, to everyone how we deal with the abnormal event. Let's welcome An. Hi, this is Sam. Today, I'm going to introduce you how factory OEE deal with abnormal events. In a manufacturing plant, there is nothing a manager wants more than uninterrupted continuous production. However, there are always unforeseen abnormality in the production since that cause production interruptions. For example, there is a shortage of material in the middle of production or a sudden machine stoppage. This unplanned stoppage often leads to a reduction in productivity. So 
when the machine suddenly stop, the whole team stop production, and you can't find the right person to troubleshoot the anomaly. This result in waste production time. And how to solve this production waste? This is the process that factory OE perform for abnormal events. Firstly, event trigger. The event is triggered when there is an abnormality in the production. For instance, the temperature of the machine is too high, and there are two ways to trigger an alert notification. First, when a person finds a problem and manually reports it. Secondly, it's a trigger automatically when our platform RTN detects a parameter above or below the alert threshold. When an abnormal event is triggered, an alert will be sent to the appropriate person. For example, if the event of material shortage is triggered, the abnormal work order will be sent to the warehouse staff, or the event or machine failure, it will be uh, sent to the maintenance team. The way to send abnormal messages is not only iFashion's own developed app, iMobile, but also through email, SMS, instant message software such as Line, Teams, and Way to Send. When the maintenance personnel receive the message, it will be accordance with the location and abnormal information provided above the abnormal work order. Immediately and accurately to the location of the abnormal events to quickly eliminate the abnormality. Repair personnel can report the status of abnormal processing and the long-term and short-term method of eliminating abnormal through mobile devices. Finally, the Visualize dashboard can help the supervisor to quickly grasp the abnormal events of the whole production. Through the event analysis of the dashboard can also target the frequent abnormal events can be resolved fundamentally. This is a classic events process scenario. When an abnormal event occurs in the workshop, the operator uh, can trigger the event through HMI, touch panel, or the machine itself. Then the event work order will be sent to the team members through the supervisor or the event work order will be sent directly to the app appropriate personnel. When the repair engineer receives the event, they will immediately go to the workshop to solve the abnormality. And finally, all abnormal events will be shown and analyzed on the dashboard. And we provide two standard dashboard templates. The first one is anomaly overview dashboard which shows real-time anomaly status of production line and station and allow maintenance team and management to, ha to have more control over and improvement the production line. For example, the upper left corner of the panel and clear graphs that there is one new abnormal event in the workshop and five have been assigned to the corresponding personnel to deal with and five are being processed, and four are overdue. In addition, the process time of each event can be seen in other panels, and layout in the middle allows manager to quickly understand where the workstation with abnormal problem is located. Additionally to anomaly overview dashboard, factory OE has another standard dashboard, the failure break down dashboard. For example, mean time between failure can help manager track the reliability of the tracking machine. The longer the time between failure, the more reliable the workstation is. Mean time to repair is the average time from the time an abnormality alert is issued until production is back in full operation. This metric is most useful when tracking how quickly maintenance personnel are able to fix problems. By tracking and analyzing failure metrics, 
manager can through thoroughly adjust the root cause of uh, anomaly time. Let's summarize briefly what factory OEE can do for you when it's come to handling abnormal events. Digital production events and issue tracking, different channels for reporting and ready to use dashboard templates can help operators, repair team and supervisor highly control the abnormal events. This can bring your company to clear events and issue detail for more concise communication. Track report is meant to ensure quick and complete resolution of issue, impending production, and analyze and identify common production issue, and formulate improvements points. And thank you here for your patience. Okay, thank you, Anne, for the, for the explanation about Advantech FX's normal event management uh, applications. Okay, so next, let's invite Sao Wei Dan to share with us uh, how Wise Eye Factory solution will support our users to rapidly transform and integrate their equipment and systems. So, Sao Wei. Okay, yeah, thank, thank you, Ray, for the introduction. Uh, so, uh, so today, uh, it's been an honor to be share with you uh, how we in ASEAN region, how actually we speed up uh, the digital transformation in the manufacturing sector. Uh, and also, uh, before we begin, maybe we can start with the pain point that, uh, that recently or uh, we frequently happen in the manufacturing industry uh, when they are doing the digital transformation by themselves. Okay, so there's, uh, we are segregated into three portions, uh, whereby one of it is the organization silos effect. Uh, ba basically, it's made mainly on the miscommunication and also the communication breakdown that uh, will be affecting the speed to do the digital digital transformation. And also, when the customer when come to us, they will they will oftenly ask oh, one question to me: How fast you can deliver the project? Is it easy to be used, or are you able to meet out my timeline? So, so all these uh, questions that come up to us that is uh, showing that they actually having the urgency on the making the factory to be smart. And also they have some uh, concern on how fast they, their engineer can speed up and also how fast we can help them to complete the digital transformation. And uh, of course we have the budget, cons uh, budget and KPI concern as well because we need to meet up that requirement what is the what 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 is the kind of the manufacturing they are doing and how we can try to do uh, the the analysis and also how how we can help them to speed up uh, in order to help them to e increase the efficiency of the product okay next please okay so there's a key factor how we judging uh, is it the solution that is suitable for them is or how the solution is a uh, calling success project commissioning when we are going for the digital transform uh, achieve in order to achieve the digital transformation in the manufacturing industry we will be need to using the IoT uh, internet of things technology to enable the integration between the low level into the uh, and and also the high level layer which is the solution side and uh, we are normally judging from the percentage uh, because all the bosses want to see the ROI right so we will we in the solution that would like that will need to achieve the digital transformation they need to achieve 15 to 20 percent of the inventory the of the cost reductions the productivity increasing by minimum 15 percent downtime uh, uh, we need to reduce the downtime uh, also the in, in increase the accuracy of the forecasting with the ai uh, predictive health maintenance and so on we need to in, uh, we need to have the accuracy up to 85 percent and also we need to have a 20% of the quality or the or we call it the return on investment okay next please so from the or from in these past 5 years the decision making pattern is keep changing and also evolution evol evolving so so uh, in in the digital transformation decision making now is uh, mainly driven by data flow and experience so the ex uh, for data portions this is what we come through with a uh, with Avantech solutions, and also uh, we can help them to maximize the efficiency from the flow, and also giving them the big data analysis for them to speed up uh, the digital transformation. Okay, next, next, please. Yeah. Okay. So, with with our 
uh, Advantech Eye Factory Solutions. This today we uh, that I would like to present uh, in, in this in this sharing is a. Uh, we are working together with Microsoft Azure in order to provide uh, security level and also the platform layer security. We have our own wise pass cloud as a backbone in order to achieve all the architecture and also the services. We are the one stop platform, cloud platform or even the on premises platform that can help you uh, in order to achieve the digital transformation quickly. OK, we have the age optimization, satellite factory, central factory data that everyone talking about the centralized data. You have a lot of the site and you all have, you want to have a one data lake to store all the data from all over the world. You want to have a global management like, for example, big company like Keysight, Intel. They would like to have the centralized data and also they're easy to manage and also easy to set the KPI uh, by the by the bosses to different different country uh, sector RBU. And also we have, they need to view all the dashboard in every RPU and also they want to do the analysis comparison between different different uh, country in order to have some of the competitiveness and also some of the effectiveness of different, uh, between different different country uh, production line. Okay, next please. So this is the, uh, in iFactory solution, this is our big umbrella. And inside this big umbrella, we are we are covering layer one to layer five. Okay, so as you can see from the bottom layer, it's more on the OT layer of the northbound. How we can communicate? Uh, how 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 that the operator can start from the beginning level to connect the data and to 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 pull the data to do the data acquisition, and then to the next step is more on the data analysis and data monitoring portion, whereby in iFactory solution in uh we have providing uh, OE overall equipment e effectiveness uh, in order to help you to check the status, uh, the abnorm, uh, and also the, the pro uh, performance and quality. We also providing endon system in order to do to make it smart event flow system or, or we call it smart alarm management system. Maintenance in order to help you to speed up the maintenance uh, report and also the timeline to be made up. Predictive health maintenance or we call it prognosis health monitoring is more on the AI predictive maintenance that we want to we need to achieve in the page uh, in the earlier page that we need to achieve up to accuracy of 85%. And in Avatite, we are able to predict seven days ahead with our PHM module. And also we have the factory main, uh, energy main monitoring system to help you to, to gener generate the report, uh, the simple report, Excel report uh, to, to fulfill the carbon scope two uh, level data. And also we can auto help you convert the electricity consumption into carbon. And it will also help you monitor all the department more, uh, energy system uh, to help uh, the bosses to, 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 to check the reduction or the carbon reduction uh, strategies. And we have the strategic process control uh, in order to help you to increase the uh, productivity in each production line. So this is actually in iFactory Works, all the, this, it's all six, uh, we call it six small apps that can help you to make it, to make your traditional factory into smart factory system. And uh, last but not least, we have the AI, uh, AI uh, generated driven to help our iFactory work to become even smarter than before. Okay, next. So this is our, actually, this is our architecture on how, uh, how easy and also we provide a, a variety of the flexibility on how you can start off your first project or how can you make it digital transformation easy. So as a from the right, uh, left side, we are PLC based. So for any PLC based in a previous way, uh, that is not uh, any other PLC brand, you need to go through the gateway and you need to go through some of the protocols in order to convert and also send it, send it to, the, to the cloud or send it to, the, to your server. So we've, we've now, our iFactory works simplified the process and we use in case that all the PLC that have the Modbus TCP or OPC UA, we are able to direct communicate to the, our real-time monitoring system, which is our iFactory solution. And also second thing is those that not in the OPC UA or not supporting the TCP, that, but they have their own driver like Siemens S7 uh, or the uh, Omron or the CNC machines, then we can use our uh, H-Link, our pow uh, powerful uh, hardware, or the web access SCADA system in order to do the data catching. 
and also to from the date from here we can uh, then send it to the uh, real time monitoring system which is our iFactory solution. We for those that have the old database uh, database ready, we are we are also now have the ODBC driver to help you to communicate with your own MSSQL, Oracle DB, and and so on uh, to help you to speed up uh, the time uh, to to do the data acquisition. And last but not least is the mode bus with the IS four five from sensor from power meter. We can directly communicate with the PC server or the uh, it, we've installed the real time monitoring system, which is iFactory solution. And in inside the real time monitoring system, in this big umbrella, we have the, all the six solutions that we mentioned just now OEE, Enden, uh, Short Floor, and so on. All this data is then being processed in our server uh, in order to let you see the dashboard, uh, to visualize the data that you need to see and also need to be doing the analysis. Okay, next. Okay, this is a more ideal picture on how actually we doing the simulate uh, synchronization between the hardware, software, and also the back end. So from here in the in the part one, you can see that uh, we have the API, uh, we have the hardware to communicate to to communicate with up to two hundred plus of the sensor uh, uh protocol and also the PLC brand uh, and and catch catch uh and also get the data. And then we from uh, and then we will pass it to the second step, which is all the six six uh, solution before we go to the mobile apps and also we go to the data visualization. So this back end uh, application will then help you to do the analysis at OE. They can automatically help you to calculate the production status, the performance, and also the quality. And then we will have the event flow to help you to manage the alarm code, the alarm uh, alarm system, and also the offset limit and and so on. And then the uh, FMS system will help you auto convert your car electricity data into carbon data with a scope two capability. And also we have ISO 50001 uh, as a standard of the energy uh, categorization. Then we have the e-manual to do, help you to do the SOP standard process procedure to, uh, in order to have the maintenance uh, support. And with, uh, with an Enden system, it can then help you like what N1 uh, have mentioned. We have have uh, MTTR machine uh, mean time to repair, and also the and also top ten uh, alarm uh, that be happening in this production line. So this Enden will help you then further to do the analysis, and also the short flow will help you to manage the work order and also some of the touch panel that require the uh, to input the defect quantity. Then moving to the, the the third step is the visualization. This is what uh, management would like to see. So all, from all these six, we already have the dashboard template that can help you uh, to speed up uh, the digital transformation because you don't need to do uh, one by one on the dashboard page. Okay, next please. So this is, uh, as we mentioned just now, we have worked with uh, AI, with uh, open AI uh, from iFactory solution with our advanced solution in uh, to the Microsoft uh, AI and also uh, open AI. So in iFactory work, actually we have accelerated the digital transformation because from previous traditional way, you need to check the Excel report and also need to check the dashboard one by one, select the field, do the filter to check the data. But with AI, we simply make the chat box smarter to have their own thinking that can suggest you what is the right way, what is the right method, and also what is the uh, what is thing happening in the production line. For example, what is the uh, data? Uh, what is the best machine that have the highest performance rate or highest quality rate? Then it was this. It will be answered by the chat box, which is already inside the uh, the dash. Uh, is already inside the iFactory solution. Okay, next. And also, uh, as we have seen that uh, M1 have men mentioned that also this is just an echo or to what N have mentioned. We simplify the process of the abnormal event. From previous traditional way, we are actually facing a lot of the human error. And if with our end and also the event flow iFactory solutions, we simplify from event trigger into the, uh, until the resolution with, by using mobile apps only that can help you to simplify the process between the operator and also between the management. Okay, next. Also, we have the command center ready for you, for your end user, end customer, and also system integrator so you don't need to create one by one on the 
uh, SRP frame and also on the dashboard portion. We have the temp we have up to 10 or uh, we have up to 10 uh, template of the dashboard, including the pretty detailed maintenance uh, in order to help you to view the data in no time. Okay, next. So it's, it's also including the iMobile services whereby it's a free download in the Android and also the uh, App Store. So it can help you to monitor the dashboard and also do the maintenance services using your phone only. Okay, next. So after uh, after sharing all these uh, after sharing all these uh, features and also the key benefit, I would like to summarize the four uh, I can say the five key notes that uh, ca that can be catching your eyes. First of all, Avantech iFactory solution providing the low coding platform uh, that can help engineer to to go to uh, to do the configuration in no time. We have IoT Academy also to help engineer to speed up the the learning curve uh, in order to help their their factory to 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 complete the digital transformation. We have the dashboard template to speed up the time to the market. We have iMobile services to simplify the process of the maintenance services. We also have the AI to help to drive to help accelerate the digital transformation by have by having a smarter chat box in our system. So of course we need to we cannot escape the successful case sharing that we have been uh, landed in different different country. So first of all we would like to uh, emphasize our uh, sharing on the North American successful project. This company is a big global industrial packaging uh, provider, and uh, they always frequently say uh, uh, having the abnormal event monitoring uh, difficulties. Uh, maybe some of the them, uh, the operator have the uh, have a human error, mis make a mistake or forget to key in the, 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 the event logs. So with our system, actually we help them to, to have uh, historical logs we help them to do the analysis with our engine system. Also, we help them to simplify the process of uh, from the auto trigger or the manual trigger from the touch panel uh, into the system so that they are able to reduce the resources uh, spent uh, overnight or spend the time uh, during the holiday. So, so all these systems uh, actually can be uh, reduced, the, uh, reduce the resources and increase the efficiency and reduce the error. Next, the next, uh, Ray, next. Okay, so so the next case is in the metal processing. So as it's also is another uh, automotive industry. So they we try to uh, digitalizing the legacy shop floor. So from the from our AIM, uh, we I connect communicate with the, each of the production line, and then it will direct send to our SCADA as a gateway, and also communicate up to the I factory solution uh, OE and then shop floor to make the production part and also to do the event handling and also the to understand each of the product efficiency and also each of the product, uh, each of the production line status. Is it idle, uh, error, or is, is it frequently running and but with a higher performance and quality rate? Next. So this will be my last slide, uh, whereby uh, as, as, you mentioned, uh, as you saw just now, we are involving multiple apps in order to make the production uh, smart, right? Yeah, this is also in FMB industry. We also having multiple uh, uh, apps in order to make our system smart. So we have the PLC. Uh, it's a quite simple on the northbound area, whereby the PLC will communicate with the ECU and then we will send it to the cloud or into into the into the customer private server. So from the server, then we install the uh, application, whereby this application will then help them to filter the or do the analysis based on the PLC data. And also they have some one of the requirement, this is uh, many people will be curious about, it's an ERP and MES database system. So we are actually able to from uh, send the data from our DB, uh, from our uh, iFactory solution into the ERP and also MES databases uh, using our mechanism uh, to help them to have the full control and also full analysis data uh, uh, from, from our process uh, data in iFactory solution into the ERP and MS system. So I think uh, I will, I'll pass the floor back to uh, Ray. Uh, thank you for listening. Okay, okay thank you, Sawe. So finally, uh, we are seeing the above content. You may also want to know how we apply this uh, in real field. So next, uh, let's welcome Hanga. 
uh, the managing director of our partner Effortech uh, to share their on-site experience with, with us. Okay, so Hanga. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ray, for the time and hello everyone. I'm Hangar, the director of Eportec. So today I will share about the efficient solution for timely resolution of abnormal downtime. So we will talk about the how the implementation, how the implement uh, in the factory on in the production. Okay, please next slide. So before that, I will talk about the downtime. Why, uh, like the Ray mentioned before in the uh, first the opening, that the downtime is the big problem of the industry. Yes. So I agree, and I think all in here is agreeing that the downtime is the big problem for industry, for factory, or for the manufacturing. So that's why I have the two different downtime in the industry. The first one is the planned downtime, and then the second is the unplanned downtime. So why the unplanned downtime with the red color of the font? Because I think here is the big problem coming from unplanned downtime. So planned downtime is uh, like the refer from the schedule period during the which the system of the machine uh, is like the example from the installing the software update and then upgrading the hardware component or connecting the system backup. So here is the planned downtime. How about the unplanned downtime? So unplanned downtime, uh, many uh, Work in the factory is like the hardware failures and then software bugs or any problem in the network issue or other. So uh, today we will talk about how to reduce, how to resolve the unplanned downtime in the factory or in the manufacturing. Okay, please next slide. Okay, so here uh, uh, I have the comparison. The lives uh, is the before the implementation in the like the OEE or under and then the Right slide is after implementation and how the profit don't time contribute for here. So in the we talk about the before implementation, we can see that here is the OE calculation. So OE basically uh, based on the three of the data. The first is availability, second is performance and the last is the quality. Availability is the main important because it's about the downtime. So we monitoring the on off of the machine on the downtime of the machine. Then if we will be effect on for the performance and quality. So that's why in the right set, uh, if we success to upgrade the availability from the 70, uh, 77% into 83%, we can make the OEE more bigger than before and performance more bigger than before. That's why why the availability of the downtime have the big effect contribute from the profit. We can see uh, the left side, uh, the left uh, side of the profit is the uh, then the compare with the right side is uh, more double. And then why uh, I have the square rate of the maintenance. So after we implement an implementation of the downtime monitoring or uh, we monitoring the availability will be concerned about the maintenance cost because we know where is the machine need to be maintained. So we set the KPI and focusing some of the, of the machine to upgrade uh, and reduce the downtime. So uh, in here, we need the more cost to doing the maintenance or services. And then we get the uh, more high the availability value and effect for performance quality and get the good uh, OE value then uh, effect to profit. Okay, next slide. Okay, so for the downtime resolution in here, I uh, based on the our implementation, uh, we have the we must set up the key action. So we have the four key action when we want to implementation the downtime resolution or we want to reduce the downtime. The first one is the downtime data record. So the downtime data record is a, is about the how you uh, we record the downtime. We record using the manually input by operator or we can uh, input uh, automatically or triggered from the machine because it's important part. If uh, the important is we can uh, put the data from automatically from the PLC for the machine is will be uh, have the uh, more accuracy, uh, more accurate than we input manual by uh, operator. And then the second is the about the total classification. So uh, we must uh, make the classification of the downtime, like uh, is the downtime by the error on the machine or is downtime by part sorted, uh, chain over, maintenance or uh, any coming uh, issue for the downtime. So it's important to be the make the analysis of the downtime classification. And then the next is about the downtime monitoring and KPS setup. 
So uh, after we uh, doing the data record and we can make the turn time classification, we do the monitoring of the turn time. So we know where is the machine or uh, we see the uh, variant of the turn time after we doing the monitoring and set the KPI. Where is the machine must to be upgrade or must to be reduced the turn time. And then the last is the turn time priority resolution. So after we have the many data uh, from the machine, uh, comparison with the one of machine compared with other machine, we do the priority resolution. So like say, uh, let's say from 100 machine, we have the big one coming from the one machine and then the second turn time bigger coming from the machine five or seven. So that's why we must doing the reduce in the bigger turn time of the machine. So that's why we make the priority of the resolution. Okay, next slide. Okay, here I have the sum of the topology on the diagram how the advantage solution can cover the turn time. Here uh, we have the three step. Uh, we call the step one, step two, and step three. So step one is about the we how we uh, put the data, how we get the data, and then the step step two is about the sorry about the tagging and turn time classification, and then the step three is. Uh, how the software work uh, like the IFAC and on OEE maintenance and visualization. So in the step one, we have the three uh, type of the data uh, can be used for the turn time data. The first is the data is coming from the machine, PLC or the sensor we call is a quantitative data and we can use the IoT gateway uh, to pulling the data and send data to the server. And then if we cannot put the data from the machine, let's say the machine is manually, let's say it's like the uh, Carmen. So many operator doing uh, working in the machine. So we can use the mobile SMI or tablet or Avantec panel PC like uh, in form by end before in the first uh, in the first presentation. So in this case, uh, we can use uh, mobile SMI to input the downtime to input what is a uh, uh, the downtime time production output or others information and then in the number t sometimes we get the machine is already have the sql already have the database so we can integrate the existing database using the scada and after all we can uh, we already pulling the data we send uh, to the server and we do the tagging and downtime time classification in here we taking the data uh, what is the data and we translate into classification of the downtime. time and then uh, in the dashboard of the iFactory, we can use the INDEN uh, OEE or the maintenance and the visualization. Our solution is in the web and mobile application. OK, next. So uh, here we uh, I share to you about the downtime classification. So we can see that uh, this is the one of the part that's part of the part the downtime classification and already available on the iFactory OEE. So we can see uh, we have the four machine in here, and we have the more than one color, any green, yellow, and then blue, red, and white. So it's mean this about the uh, is the classification like uh, like yellow. Like yellow is the idle status, and then blue is the schedule break, and then white is a uh, saying offer. So from the from this the dashboard, we can see that the uh, saying offer has the con uh, peak contribute about the downtime. time, and then uh, we can we can see in the machine tree uh, many yellow color in the dashboard. It mean uh, idle is uh, have the peak contribute from the turn time. So we can focus to resolve the uh, turn time in the machine tree and uh, we need the analysis why the chain offer is the big contribute from the turn time. That's why we important we can uh, monitoring using this dashboard. OK, next slide. OK, and then uh, we have the like the KPS setup. So the KPS setup like uh, I informed before that the inventor because we can make like the limitation. So we have the target to make the availability 90%. So we can set the uh, KPI in the 90% and we're doing the maintenance of the machine. We're doing the services on the machine until we can reach the uh, availability more than 90%. So that's why we include the uh, have 
dashboard to monitoring the KPI of the every machine of the availability. Okay, next slide. And here we uh, is about the alarm monitoring. That uh, in the downtime classification, this is the classification downtime by machine. So every machine uh, have the own classification. But in this dashboard is the by a factory, like in the one of factory or in your factory or in your site, you have 100 machine. And where is the machine uh, have the big contribute from the downtime? Let's say in the we have the alarm code frequency analysis so it's it's based on the quantity how many drone time uh, and then in the right side is uh, about the alarm code time analysis how many uh, uh, this is the graphic based on the time so from this we can uh, focus for selection where is the machine must be resolved first then others so from this dashboard, we can see that SMT line one, machine three is the big problem. So we focusing to resolve this uh, uh, this downtime because he make the big contribute of the downtime from the one factory. And then if we uh, we look in the alarm code time, is same is coming from SMT line uh, line one and machine three. So we can focus to solve the alarm on the downtime in the SMT line one and machine three. That's why we need uh, monitoring. You, we need this dashboard to monitoring priority of the machine. Okay, next slide. Okay, here uh, we have the alarm quantity analysis and alarm time analysis. So that's uh, from this is same with before. Uh, it will be more detail, more than one machine, and we make comparison between the others. Okay, next. Okay, and in here I have the topology about the implementation. So starting from the first implementation, if you have the PLC or you have the OPC, uh, we can use the IoT data gateway or uh, RTM like so we information before to pulling the data because this uh, IoT gateway already support more than 200 of the protocol of the PLC. And then how about if you have the lock, uh, the mess, Mostly uh, coming the issue from the factory is they say that the machine is locked by vendor or we cannot pulling data from the machine. So in this case, uh, I suggest to you using the remote I/O so you can using the Adam Adam of uh, the Advantech Data Acquisition Module to put the data from the machine. So you can tap from the relay or you can uh, add the new sensor in here, and then in the right side is the is the like sometimes you see CNC machine. So sometimes ECNC machine is including with the tower light sensor, like the red, green, yellow color. In this uh, tower light, you can we have the simple starter kit, the wise S100. Uh, this is will be read the red or yellow color or green color of the uh, light, and then will be can inform data to the server. So after we using we pulling data from PLC or using the Adam or using the WISE S100 and then we send data into the server and here we have the OEE and maintenance software and uh, e-manual and for the server we have the two put of the server like so we informed before that we have the on-prem and we have the cloud server and how to integrate with the third-party software or or we uh, pick a software like MBS, ERP, CMS, or PLM. So in here, usually the, we use the API or the sharing database. And where is we can implementation the solution? Actually, we can implementation the solution in the uh, semiconductor like PCB industry, SMT, or electronic industry, and then in the food and beverage, footwear and textile, and then automotive, uh, automotive uh, of industry. Okay, next. Okay, and here is the my last slide. So I have uh, I will talk about the our experience in the one of the project. So in here we have the more than fifty machine that we are doing the monitoring of the OE, including the energy, because the customer want to see how many the energy used in the one of the machine. So like the in here 
uh, we pulling data from the PLC. So the PLC have the just have the serial. So ECU or IoT data gateway have the serial port. So in here we can convert from serial into TCP IP and then send data to the web access card. Why we still use the web access card in this implementation? Because the customer have the some calculation formula or some the, uh, like the input manual of the data to make the calculation and then uh, after that send data to the server. And in here we have the dashboard of the OEE including the energy and we integrate it with the third party software we call it is the Tableau. And here the we can use the API to communicate with Tableau or we can use uh, or other software like ERP or MES. So based on in this case, uh, we add the vibration sensor because we have the eye factory for the predictive maintenance. So we doing the monitoring of the vibration of the machine and we can have the dashboard for the predictive maintenance. OK, next slide. OK, so we base uh, our base is in Jakarta, so we have three office Jakarta, Bandung and Surabaya. So I think it's enough uh, for my presentation uh, and back time to Ray. OK. Thank you, Anga. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, all right. So, uh, thank thank you to the three speakers and oh, sorry. Thank you to the three speakers for their contributions that concludes the topics of our sharing today. I hope the content met everyone's expectation and brought you the <coughs> sorry sufficient uh, information. Okay. And by the way, uh. Earlier, we mentioned our product application and actual cases. So how do we uh, go about the digital in integration in our plans? And Advantech and Factory offer two different solutions, both um, premise and cloud-based. So you can choose the appropriate product depending on the specific requirement of the site or customer's standards. Uh, our product license are shared. So is supporting both of equipment efficiency and EHS solutions. Therefore, uh, you, you only need to purchase a sufficient number of the license to extend according to the project needs. OK, so the last part is our. The last part is our QA section, so I also invite our online partners uh, to post your questions freely and uh, we may have further discussions. OK. OK, so there are few questions. So the first one, Marcus Chen, uh, he asked, do we need all I app at one server to keep to kickstart digital transformation? So I think this problem, maybe we can this question, maybe we can ask uh, Mr. Sawe to answer this question. Yeah, Sawe. OK, uh, thank you, Ray. Uh, okay. Also, thank you, Marcus, for the questions. So uh, actually, if you ask me, do you need all I app? Uh, to be honest, you may need. Uh, it depends on the situations. Okay, so some some of the, uh, some of the manufacturing side they already have the smart shop floor or for the lean manufacturing. Just they need the OE to do the further data analysis. Then we can just add on top of the OE solution. Uh, how we integrate with the their shop floor system into our system. Or with uh, maybe some already they have the MS system, but they don't have the smart uh, alarm system. They don't have the, they want to do the energy management. Also, they want to do the OE. Then we need to bundle together with these three solutions into one server. So uh, I can say it's actually, it's quite depend on what you need. If you have more uh, more on the project uh, leads, maybe uh, you, you can contact us. Yeah, so that we can, uh, we can, we can answer to you more uh, e effectively. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, Zawai. And uh, wow, that's a kind of that, that's such a long question. Okay, so um, I have a question. So this this kind of the very practical questions. So maybe maybe uh, Mr. Hanga, can you help to ask? Uh, can can you help to respond on these questions? For like the first one, uh. Is it possible to integrate with ERP and ME system? And uh, what type of the protocol uh, we be uh, will be used? Yeah, this 
Mr. Anga? Okay. Yeah. Maybe I will answer number one and number three, and the others uh, can uh, answer by so way. Yeah. So for uh, possible to integrate with the RP or MES system, yes, it's possible. And usually uh, we push using the API. So we have the documentation how uh, the integrate between the iFactory and the other software like RP MES using the API. So uh, hopefully in this uh, protocol, uh, we use the API and this is the open protocol. So I think it's uh, easy. We just talk with the IT that uh, handle the ERP or MES system to try to connect uh, the software. And then the number two, if we use the cost solution. Okay, so for uh, if we use the cloud solution, so if we use the cloud solution, it's same. I think to uh, access the data from the cloud, we we still using the API, uh, not directly uh, from the database. But if the so we have the any concern, maybe so we uh, you can add the answer in the number two. Yeah. So uh, actually, I uh, just echo from what Hanga have said. Yes, true, but. Uh, because of the if you are uh, it depends on the cloud that you're using if you are using our Avantech public cloud then uh, it is uh, we, we will not open the we cannot open the the, the the api for you because it involving the database for other tenant other company other customer as well so so this is more on the uh, privacy that we have already signed with different different uh, subscriber so so for this case if you want to access the database from the cloud uh, from iFactory solution directly, I will suggest that you have your own uh, VM or you have your own uh, platform like AWS or, or, or Azure. Then we just install into your system and you can access directly or freely from the system because there is no, because that there, there, there system belongs to you. But in the public cloud, it belongs to everyone. Yeah. So, so that will be the major difference. Okay. And I think the number three uh, is if num number three is possible i think it's number two right so it's number number two is possible is there any access limitation for user access uh sorry so can you also uh, help to answer this, this question okay so actually uh if if uh, you are following the number two that uh, you are using your own private cloud then uh, actually there is no any limit uh limitation for user access so it depends on the input output per second uh, and and in this case, uh, it, it depending on how how frequent you want to who, uh, query the data. So that is actually not limitation by user. Yeah. Okay. So for the number four and number five, for the iFactor solution, is there any uh, limitations, machine or parameters? Uh, I think I can direct you to answer this question. I, uh, the answer is no. Uh, we don't have any limitation for the machine or parameters. But uh, of course, when the performance is not enough, you need to purchase maybe one more IPC or or or, or our servers. So after you, after you purchase the, uh, the the machines, then you can extend your license and also extend your parameters, yeah, to to meet the requirement from your customer. Okay, and also of course we can combine uh, everything in one server. But of course, it's still uh, it's still depends on the, the performance, okay? And uh, the question says, can we come by into one server between iFactory OEE and uh, OE stand and uh, analysis? If it's possible, how about the Grafana dashboard? Can we add into one SAP friend? I think this is a very practical question. So Banga, can you help to, to, to answer this question? Yes. Okay, so for uh, can we combine into server between IFX3, uh number five is correct, right? Yes, yes, number five. Yeah. I think you do yes, another. We can uh, combine. Yes, yes, I think uh, we can combine the IFX3 OE and uh, OE extend analysis because like uh, so we mentioned before that uh, we have the like in the room of the we can set the many many dashboard in the one of the one of the frame of the dashboard like so we show in the presentation so we can add the oe and then oe extend analysis or we can add the eas and then maintenance on soft floor in the one of the frame of the dashboard like that 
OK, so thank you once again for participating in today's event. We are looking forward to seeing you again soon. And uh, yeah, and we will keep in this page made for a few more seconds. And if you have any question, you can also uh, post on the, on, on the chat box and we will answer you by the text. OK. Bye-bye.